Welcome back to the show. And we are dedicating this entire show, as I said, off the top to mental health. And one of the organizations that offers mental health services here in our community is the Youth Services Bureau. And I am joined by Michelle Earl, coordinator of mental health services with the Youth Services Bureau. Michelle, welcome to the show. Uh, certainly always great to speak to uh, the Youth Services Bureau. And, and let's start off talking a, a little bit about the program and services that, that you offer at the Youth Services Bureau. Right. So um, Youth Services Bureau has been around since 1960. So it's been around for quite a while and it's the largest youth serving agency in Ottawa. And um, some of the services that we offer in mental health is a 24-7 crisis line. Um, and so it's important to note that with this crisis line, it's not necessarily just used when you're in active crisis. It could also be used as a resource. So if families are looking to get um, some community resources, they can call our crisis line. Um, we also have a 24-7 chat line. So again, you know, it's not always easy for folks to make that first phone call. And uh, we know that for some youth, it's a lot easier to be able to do that through chat. Um, so we're really, we're really pleased that we can offer both of those uh, services. Michelle, are you seeing an, um, an increase? Are you seeing an increase in, in calls during the pandemic? Um, absolutely, absolutely. Like um, we're finding that there's an increase in calls where you know where youth are feeling quite isolated and not having um, anyone around their social network. Um, parents are also feeling a high stress level, so they are calling our crisis line, looking for support, and as well as looking to see what's available in the community. Uh, let's look at some of the other great things that you offer, and one of those is the is your youth mental health walk-in clinic. Tell us a little bit about the walk-in clinic and perhaps how it's been impacted by the pandemic. Right. So our um, youth mental health walk-in clinic, uh, we have uh, available two days a week um, from 12 till 8 p.m. And the last appointment is six. And so we have seen an increase as well as youth coming into our walk-in as well as parents. And some of the things that we're noticing um, is for youth that are experiencing a sense of loss uh, during this, you know, during this pandemic. Um, a lot of youth haven't had their graduation ceremonies as they had initially yeah. planned. There's no proms, um, lack of sport teams. And so they are feeling, you know, you know, a sense of loss. Um, also a sense of isolation. They're away from their friends. Um, it's difficult for, for some youth to be uh, learning online. Um, and as well as there's this, this increase in exhaustion. So there's a lack of a sleep routine, um, not eating well, lack of physical activity. Um, and as well as, you know, parents are also feeling the impacts of this pandemic. Um, you know, they have, um, you know, they're, they're also finding it hard to, to look at their own self-compassion where it's so important to do that. You know, we often remind parents it's it's like that saying when you get onto the airplane and they advise you to put the the mask on first, um, you know, in order to be able to and then after it to uh, to your child. It's the same yeah. thing with parenting. Um, Great analogy. It's so important. Yeah. 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 So it's really important for parents to be able to take that little bit of a little bit of a break um, and then um, being able to feel like they're rejuvenated and be able to go back and parent. Uh, how do we go about encour encouraging our kids to, to, you know, to really seek out that help that they need? You know, if, if, if they don't want to access services, if I'm a parent and I, and I see that my, my child is struggling, how do I encourage them to access services? Sometimes parents are the, are the best resource for their teens. You know, and right. this is about having open communication. It's about um, being able to do things with your youth, um, like things such as, you know, going for coffee. Uh, it could be going for uh, a drive uh, in the car. You know, families have told us that some of the most meaningful conversations that they've had with their youth is when they are in the car. Um, so th those sorts of things. Um, and really listen to to your youth and give them 100% of your attention and to try and remove any kind of distractions, you know, remove the phones, the tablets, the computers, those sorts of yeah. things, and really just focus in on the connection. Um, and also that, um, you know, as a parent, um, we often sometimes we want to give advice 
Uh, mm -hmm. And we want to be able to tell the youth what we would do if it was uh, if we were in that situation. And sometimes that's not what the youth is really looking for. They're not looking for um, advice or answers. They're just looking for a sounding board. So um, this is a really good opportunity for parents to practice empathy. You know, to really think about what's it like to be in that you know in your teen's shoes. Imagine what they're feeling. Yeah, I'm glad um, you mentioned that, Michelle. It's so important because oftentimes when our kids, you know, start sharing with us, our immediate reaction is start giving advice and almost overwhelm them. So uh, some great advice. Michelle, uh, really appreciate you spending time. Just want to remind everybody that crisis line is 613-260-2360. And of course, you can find out more information on the website. That's ysb.ca. We'll be back with more daytime right after this.